friends in this video we are going to talk about tuning fork test there are three types of tuning fork test Rhinie's test Weber's test and absolute bone conduction test but in this video we are going to specifically talk about Rhinie's test Rhinie's test is performed to know which the type of a deafness and the degree of a deafness the type of a deafness means conductive deafness or sensory neural deafness and degree of deafness that is mild deafness moderate or severe deafness. Now, there are several types of tuning forks with different frequencies available. Like, but in ENT, we use basically three types of tuning forks. That is 256 Hz, 512 Hz frequency and 1024 Hz frequency. Because uh, less than 256 Hz frequency are better uh, felt than heard. And above the 256 Hz frequency are better heard than felt. So in ENT practice, we generally use three tuning box, 256, 512, and 1024 hertz frequency. But in routine, we generally use 512 frequency because in it is the mid-speech frequency and the tone decay is minimal. And also, the overtone is avoided in 512 frequency. So it is the tuning box which is commonly used in ENT practice. Now, this... These are the three tuning forks. The frequencies are written on the shoulder of the tuning fork. 256 hertz frequency, 512 and 1024 hertz frequency. The most commonly used is 512 hertz frequency in ENT practice. Now, the parts of the tuning fork are base, stem and shoulder and prongs. The tuning fork is hold from the stem part so that is it is easy for the use. First of all, the procedure of the test is explained to the subject and uh, now the test is uh, performed with the 512 frequency as it is used commonly. Uh, the tuning fork is striped over the firm surface like the elbow, uh, patella or the sole, sole of the shoe. It is not struck over the hard surface like the table because it produces multiple frequencies or overtone. So, uh, any firm surface is used. Now, after striking over the elbow, uh, we are placing the prongs of the tuning fork right to center, about two centimeter away from the external auditory meters. Then, as the uh, at the moment the patient stops hearing the sound, the base of the tuning fork is then transferred over to the mastoid process of the patient. Then, if the patient uh, stops hearing, then he the patient raises the hand. The same procedure is repeated again by reversing. That is, first of all, the base of the tuning fork is placed over the mastoid process and then when the patient stops hearing the sound, then it is placed, the prongs are placed near the external auditory meters. Start. First of all, I will uh, strike the tuning fork over my elbow, then I will place it near your ear. When you stop hearing the sound, please raise your hand and then I will place it on the back of your ear on the mastoid bone. Then when you stop hearing the sound, then again you, you have to raise your hand. The same procedure will be repeated again. Here, the air conduction is tested of the patient. The same procedure is repeated again. So the the Tracking of the left ear is completed. The same procedure is repeated with the right ear. Now, for the results of the Rhinus test, we will see the interpretation of the Rhinus test. In positive Rhinus test, the air conduction is better than bone conduction. And it is seen in normal subjects and sensory neural hearing loss. In negative Rhinus test, bone conduction is better than air conduction. And it is seen in conductive.
active we are doing loss. Now, sometimes there may be false negative triangle stress may be found. And in this, the, even though the patient's ear is uh, diseased or the ear is affected, but the test shows negative. In that, the bone conduction is uh, better than air conduction, as in the negative triangle stress. But it may happen in severe unilateral hearing loss. It may be further ruled out by the Weber's test. Drying is equal, uh, drying is equal, and it air conduction and bone conduction are equal. Sometimes it is seen in mild conductive hearing loss. And if the ear, the negative uh, test is seen only if the conductive hearing loss is greater than five, uh, 15 decimal or more. To know the degree of deafness, uh, we'll see here. There are uh, the test is performed with three different uh, hertz frequency tuning form: 256 hertz, 512 hertz, and 1024 hertz frequency tuning form. First, if the test shows positive with 256 hertz frequency and also with 512 and 1024 hertz frequency, then we say it is absolutely normal as all three gives positive. But if the Rhinese test is negative with 256 hertz frequency and then it gives positive with 512 hertz and 1024 hertz frequency, then we say it is a mild conductive hearing loss. Now, if the test gives negative for the 256 hertz frequency and 512 hertz frequency, and but positive with the 1024 hertz frequency, then we say it is a moderate conductive hearing loss. Now, but if the Rhinese test gives negative with all the three tests, uh, all the three hertz frequency, then we say it is a severe conductive hearing loss.